Overall, the uh, second half, I thought our defensive intensity was better. Um, obviously, wasn't great. We scored 157 points. Um, but, you know, some of the areas that we talked about before, we didn't cover. You know, the paint defense, it's you know, 44 points at the half, 74 for the game. You're not going to win too many games like that. You know, they didn't hurt us from three. Uh, we talked about that at length and how they, you know, get that. The transition, the offensive rebounds, you know, we went small at times for, you know, an offensive advantage and it hurt us. Uh, there were times we were matched size for size and they outworked us. Uh, so, you know, the points in the paint, the offensive rebounds, and then obviously second half turnovers uh, were really, uh, you know, they put you at a deficit. Were you happy with your shot selection in the second half? Uh, in general, it, it was solid. Um, obviously, you're, you're playing against a, a tough defense. Um, they're going to up their pressure as we did ours. Um, at times, we did not execute. Uh, but, you know, in, in, those, in those moments, you know, guys have to just, you know, figure it out and make a play. Um, but we have to make sure, you know, down the stretch after timeout or in the flow that we get a good shot. In terms of this, a game like this being a development opportunity, how valuable is it for guys like Jack, for Tavia, really? I mean, all minutes are. I mean, it's not just this game. I think, you know, any live competition, you know, NBA court, it's an opportunity for them to work on their craft and, and get that experience that they need. Um, so it's all valuable. It's not just tonight. Uh, playing in those crunch moments, you know, once again, you can't simulate that. So th those are important uh, learning moments. But, um, you know, there's some good things. You know, I was, I was, I was pleased with how we competed. Uh, we were able to stay in the game after getting down double digits, you know, late in third, I think. Uh, so. Give us, we gave ourselves a chance. We, we didn't do everything right, but you know, we felt like we at least gave ourselves a chance. What was your rationale for the lineup change at center? Uh, you know what, it was, it kind of goes back actually. Um, we talked about giving uh, TB a, a long look of games. Um, we were transitioning to go back to Gaff as a starter and he got COVID. And so then he missed, you know, an amount of time, um, but you know, overall, it's, it's, you know, I think just the defensive presence um, was, was the biggest key. Um, and TB does a lot of good things. Um, so uh, it's, not, it's not a knock at him at all. But uh, we've had some success early with Gaff, you know, in that starting group. And I wanted to go back to that. You intend to continue to start Gaff for the remainder of the season? Um, yeah. I, I don't necessarily want to say the remainder of the season, but for now, until I decide otherwise, yeah. <laughs> He makes it look easy. He, he really does. He's, you know, shifty, he's aggressive, he's strong, um, and his quickness, um, you know, it, it lends to his ability to go wherever he wants on the floor. You know, whether we're in coverage and we're up, if you're down the floor, he's attacking, eating up all that space, and even versus switches. I mean, he's got a confident mid-range pull-up, so it's just tough to um, you know, to negate, even when you are, you know, able to keep him in front. He's, he's shooting that thing with a lot of confidence. So uh, and his ability to get to the free throw line. I mean, I know late we were, you know, fouling Pirtle to steal some possessions, but 43 free throws is, you know, that's, uh, that's a huge number. You mentioned that pull-up with Murray. I mean, is it, you mentioned that there's just not a lot you can do. I mean, what else, is there something you can try? I mean, how do you defend? Yeah, it I mean, you know, late in the, I think, believe it, fourth and overtime, first overtime, we tried to go get him and get the ball out of his hands. It's really the only options left, you know, with the amount of shooting that they have on the floor and the ability to attack the paint. Uh, yes, you're giving something up, puts you in rotations and potentially at a deficit on the glass, but take the ball out of his hands, maybe something positive will happen. How difficult was it to limit Kelvin Johnson's threes? Uh, shouldn't have been difficult at all. Uh, we went into the game saying he's a runoff and we didn't run him off once. Five for nine. So um, we obviously didn't you know, carry that over and implement that in the game. How, how disconcerting, obviously, you wanted to execute and win the game, but how disconcerting is it that the team didn't execute a pretty clear directive such as that? Well, I mean, it's a hopefully it's a teaching moment. You know, it's we were out of timeouts, we're going in the flow, you know, the play is drawn up, so everyone should, should understand that. Um, but you just having that attention to detail and carry over and 
there's a stoppage in play. You got to make sure you know you're in the right spot. You know what your responsibilities are in that moment, and we have to execute. You know, it's just it's simple, but somehow, some way, we have to get, make sure we get at least a shot up. Speaking of that defensive execution, not just on Kelvin, but you know, you talked about coming back. Hey, you got to play defense to better uh, for this final stretch, and um, obviously that wasn't the best thing tonight. Not at back, all. Not following the directive, or was that just this first game? A little bit of both. I mean, you know, we could have done you know a lot better in certain areas, um, but I have to give them credit. They've been playing exceptionally well offensively. Um, you know, they're scoring a lot of points. Uh, once again, they lead the league in, in points in the paint. So that's not unique. Obviously, to this extent, it's a bit high, but they average 56 points in the paint. So they're, they're doing something right. Um, they're playing to their strength, and um, I, get, I have to give those guys a lot of credit. All right, last question on you. Hey, Coach, obviously back to back tomorrow. Does the high minutes for guys change anything for tomorrow, or you kind of just roll out your usual game plan minutes wise? I will attack it the same. You know, as of now, we'll have to reevaluate re the bumps and the bruises uh, this evening and tomorrow morning. And you know, if there's a recommendation for limitations, then we'll we'll go go forth there. But if not, you know, you plan on using the rotation uh, the same. And it seemed like a bunch of guys got nicked up at different points in the game. Do you know if any of them are potentially serious? I don't believe so, but I don't want to comment without without knowing. You know, it was just a whole lot of no defense on uh, both ends. Um, but, you know, I think we did a great job, honestly, of just competing. I think um, we had uh, possessions where it's just the really the little things. Um, you know, boxing out, uh, you know, gambling, um, you know, just, just those little things. That's all. But I think overall, can't be mad. Played three overtime. Was it three overtimes? Two? Oh, felt like three. <laughs> so I can't be mad. With so much action in a game like that, is is there like a, a play or a, a one particular thing that you kind of look back on and wish uh, went differently for you guys? Um, I mean, there's a bunch of plays, but there's really no point to ever really think about, do about it, because you can't do nothing about it. Um, you know, obviously there were a couple of plays, but um, you know, win some, you lose some. So on to the next. Kyle, what was some of the discussions that you guys were having as you go into the overtime? I'm just curious, you know, what you, were you guys talking about amongst yourselves at that point? Uh, I mean, the biggest thing was just, you know, just trying to stay connected defensively. Um, you know, I thought we had great competitive spirit in the second half and over times. Um, everyone wanted to win. Everybody was, uh, you know, rallying behind each other. And that's all you can really ask for. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, we gave ourselves a chance and you know, it just fell short. So. I think you said uh, earlier this season, if you guys just shot league average from three, there'd be a lot of games that would have gone differently. Um, how encouraged are you by these last five, six games, the way you guys have shot from the outside? I mean, it's great. Um, you know, the three-point line is a great equalizer in, in basketball. Um, you know, obviously, it's a big part of the game now, and you have to take and you have to make them, um, you know, at a reasonable clip. <clears throat> so. Um, it, it makes the game a lot easier, um, you know, puts a lot more stress on the, the defense. Uh, and, um, you know, it just makes everything click a little bit more. So. How tough will this back to back be as far as back to backs go? Um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think so. We'll see. Neil? Hey, Kuz, just to piggyback off that a little bit, typically what do you do to try and get your body right and ready for second night of a back-to-back, -back, especially when you have travel in between? Um, you know, just try to get a lot of sleep um, as much as you can. You know, uh, you know, someone like me, it's very, very tough because um, I'm so rushed for the, from the game and I'm 
usually up till three, four in the morning um, just because my mind's racing. But, you know, typically, you know, especially in a situation like this, you get into the city, um, you know, try to fall asleep as, as much as you can. Usually have a team meeting around 11 or 12. Um, then you just go right back to sleep and just, you know, just you're running on fumes and you uh, just try to figure it out. And, um, yeah, that's a back-to-back in the NBA. Thanks, Coos. Safe travels. Yeah, no problem. Last question to Christos. Hey, Coos. Hope you're doing well. How, how important and what you need to do as a team is to turn the frustration for the outcome on tonight's game into the motivation, determination about the game in Cleveland? Yeah, uh, I think the best thing in all of, uh, you know, basketball is, um, you know, we got another shot tomorrow and you have to have a short term memory. And obviously this one stings a little bit because we had opportunities to win and, you know, went down the stretch and, you know, we gave ourselves a chance, but can't dwell on it because um, got one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference, um, you know, going going to their house and. It's going to be a dogfight. You know, obviously, this is the time where, uh, you know, really good teams are, are, are preparing and get ready for the playoffs. So, you know that they're going to bring it. And uh, we're on the outside looking in still. So, um, you know, we're going to be fighting as well. So, I think it's going to be a great battle. And, um, you know, it's, it's all about who's going to want it more. So and, and speaking about your game and about your presence in the team, do you feel now resp- more responsible to lead the team into get back on the winning column? Um, I mean, I, I do, but um, we have a team of leaders. I think uh, everyone has input. Everybody's, um, you know, everyone values each other's uh, voice. And, um, you know, that's what it's about. You know, it's not about just me being a leader or whatnot. You know, it's about everyone holding everyone accountable and uh, being on the same page. And I think that's um, how all great teams are. So. Not the outcome that we wanted to come out to it, but it was a hard fought game. You really can't be mad at it. You know, it's a lot of things that we could fix to prevent a long game like that. But at the end of the day, you really can't be mad at the effort and the energy that we put into it. Obviously, a much different story on offense than defense. Mm-hmm. Um, offensively, you know, the positives, uh, what led to such a, a big game for you guys? Um, we really just came out and played basketball, you know, kept the ball moving. Um, to a T, made sure we made the defense move. There was times where it stuck, but at the end of the day, we figured it out. You know, we got the ball to the right guys that needed to take the right shots. You know, we got the ball into the paint, we got to the free throw line. Little by little, you know, it was just chip away, chip away, chip away. And we paid attention to details. Um, like I said, just at the end, the outcome wasn't what we wanted. Hey, well, you made the lineup change tonight when you were starting. Mm-hmm. How- how was it for you to go through a period where you weren't playing as much as you wanted to work? It was tough. There was a lot of frustration, but at the end of the day, I wanted to be a good teammate. So I didn't have, I didn't want to wear my feelings on my sleeves. There was times where I did, but at the end of the day, I can't bring that negative energy around the team. So, I mean, I apologize to the team for that, the times that I did do it, but at the end of the day, I just wanted to be the best teammate I possibly could be for the time that I was, you know, on the sideline. I tried to keep as much energy on the sideline for the team, that, uh, for the guys that was out there on the floor. You know, like I said, the frustration was up and down. It was a bit 50-50 for me. But in a situation like that, um, you know, learn to be professional is the main thing. Um, you know, it was going to be times where I probably was going to be in the game for maybe three minutes, come right back out and not play for the rest of the game. Sometimes that frustrated me, but at the end of the day, getting out of my own head and getting out of my own world to be able to be a good teammate for my team is the main thing that I wanted to do. How do you, in terms of an opportunity for you to grow, develop, how critical are these now final 23 games? Mm -hmm. Very critical, you know? I mean, at the end of the day, we just got to take it one game at a time. The next game is uh, the biggest game, for sure, for us, because we want to make a stretch no matter what the outcomes of these games is, whether it's an ugly win or a pretty win, we want to come out and we want to play basketball to where we can get back in the position we were in at the beginning of the year or even close, you know? So really just coming out and having that mindset that by the end of this, uh, by the end of the regular season, we're going to be either in the play-in or the playoffs, plain and simple. What does having Ish Smith back do for you uh, as a guy who can get in the lane and throw lobs? I mean, it's good. You know, Ish, 
does his thing. He's a real crafty guard. He keeps guys guessing for sure. Really, you know, I feel like there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of people out there on the floor that really have a hard time trying to contain him because you never know what he's going to do. You know, he's one of those shifty guards that knows how to find guys on the roll, find guys on the three-point line, and find cutters, find it simple. And whenever he wants to get a basket himself, he does that for sure. So, I mean, it's great to have his back because, you know, little by little, he does the little things for sure. He'll get in and rebound. You know, he got him a dunk in Indiana. You know, it's, a, it's rare to see that. But he does little things like that to give energy to this team. And, I mean, he's a real big help. And with me, I mean, just for him being able to find me and stuff to where I can be able to put pressure on the rim and open up the floor is a good thing because if he doesn't hit me, he's going to hit somebody on the corner or on the wing or anything like that because I'm rolling so hard to the basket. How tough was it to limit Pirtle on the offensive glass? Um, Pirtle is a dynamic rebounder. You know, he's real tough. I mean, he's a real big dude. He's strong. So it was tough because there was times in the game where I was a big gas. I'm not going to lie to you because <laughs> this is kind of like my first game back playing, you know, the usual minutes that I would usually play. And then coming back from the COVID protocol and stuff, um, I've been working ever since, really just trying to make sure I get my win back and stuff. So it was a bit tough. You know, but I never step down from a challenge. I go out and I give 110 percent whatever I do. I mean, you know, props to him because he comes out and he does his job. He knows what he has to do and he knows his job well, for sure. So props to him. And like I said, just coming out and giving 110 percent effort, trying my best to fight the Giants at the league. <laughs> Neil. Daniel, first off, how is uh, your ankle feeling? It's doing better. You know, um, it was a crazy turn of events because when I heard it, I went back down and my adrenaline was kind of rushing. I came out and um, I blitzed Murray. At that time, it wasn't hurting. And then right when um, they turned it over, that's when it started, like, um, really just pumping. It felt, like, <laughs> it felt like something was on it, just making it pump, and it was, it was real bad. But getting back on the sideline and making sure I kept it loose and not really just letting it get too tight was um, the best thing because going back in, it felt great. You know, right now it feels amazing. I went in and got some ice on it, you know. So ready for the next game for sure. <laughs> and for you, I guess, you know, during the course of the day, when do you find out that, okay, you're going to be in the starting lineup? Is that at morning shoot around? Is that right before the game? No, it was morning shoot around. Um, I didn't know if I was starting or if I was coming off the bench. I really wasn't too worried about it because I knew for a fact I was going to get some type of time today. But knowing that I was going to start, you know, it put me back in the mindset of just coming out and really just setting the tone with the energy, setting the tone on the glass, setting the tone on defense and that's the main that's the main couple of things that I really wanted to set the tone with tonight, especially since I found out that I was starting. I knew that this was a team that was going to be really trying to get downhill in the paint. So setting the tone on defense to trying to protect the basket as much as I can and gain rebound um, was the main thing for me. And kind of less about the game, but, you know, last couple plus weeks, how, what has it been like uh, getting to know Chris Stapps Porzingis and, you know, maybe has he given you any tips? Um, No tips from him yet. Um, but getting to know him has been real good. You know, just learning about him as a person, learning about him as a player. You know, he keeps telling me he's going to get me back from um, when we played Dallas and I got him uh, off that rebound when we had that back-to-back -back in Dallas and stuff. He said he's going to get me back sooner or later, so I'm going to try to contest it, and if he dunks on me, yeah, he's going to for sure get me back, but at the end of the day, I'm going to try to block his shot. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Safe travels. Mm -hmm.